Okay, so try to break uh, a little girl lost from songs of experience uh, down into uh, understandable language. I think that's the intention with this. Um, at the start of the poem, we see um, whether this is Blake's voice, whether this is a voice as a prophet is arguable. Uh, however, certainly this this voice is talking to the future you know it's, it's perhaps talking to us children of a future age reading this indignant page so uh reading the uh the uh, where, where it says indignantly the the anger of the speaker um saying knowing that in a former time love sweet love was thought a crime uh, and obviously we have this repetition of love with the addition of the modifier and the modifying adjective sweet uh, emphasizing what the speaker how the speaker feels the thoughts on love um, and i think in a sense you know it, it's showing a, a love was thought a crime uh, and there is a sense of anger with the indignant and the repetition uh, that shows that um, the anger is focused on uh, the the repressive beliefs of that former time of the era that the speaker is uh, speaking of um, the speaker goes on to talk about the age of gold uh, so uh, in the age of gold free from winter's cold uh, the age of gold um, refers to kind of the ancient time of the gods of uh, classical Greece Greece we all now focus on uh you know the age of gold is evocative of uh, a previous era when things were perceivably better uh your parents might be talking of uh how great the 1980s were how great the music was how great the fashion was um because that was when uh they they were growing up it was evocative of their their kind of freedom their youth uh take it from me the fashion was horrendous and some of the music was terrible some was great though um but the age of gold here does refer to that ancient time um but it can refer to i mean we can be living in the ancient gold uh in, in the age of gold you know it, it's the age of gold could be now uh and this is what blake i think perhaps uh refers to um you know if if it, the age of gold could have been in blake's time uh had uh, people not have been governed by kind of repressive um beliefs um what happens or what blake is arguing against is uh, about arguing for sorry is that uh innocence in his era it was overshadowed by parental authority it was uh, overshadowed by constraint and, and kind of the judgment of others so notice how when we talk about the uh, age of gold and the youthful pair notice all of the language that uh, or notice the light and dark imagery uh, there's a lot of language that focuses on uh, bright, holy light, sunny, uh, garden bright, and again, holy light repeated. Um, a lot of the language here, I mean, this, this is really evocative of Adam and Eve before the fall. Uh, and that, that brightness, uh, the, the light, uh, in, in a sense, metaphorically uh, represents uninhibited sexual freedom. Uh, even the word holy there, you know, holy light, holy is is uh, used in the Bible to, to suggest good. Uh, and what happens is that um, the, uh, the curtains of the night are removed. Uh, so the metaphor for shame is removed. Uh, the, the, the metaphor for uh, sexual freedom there is removed. So, so darkness is is sexual repression. Uh, yet here it is moved because uh, removed because uh, this uh, this passage represents sexual freedom. Um, we have the garden, and it is evocative of uh, the Garden of Eden before the fall. Uh, but in uh, the Old Testament, there is also the poem, the Song of Songs. Um, and some some critics suggest it refers to the Song of Songs. Uh, Song of Songs is uh, a metaphor for sexual enjoyment. So that, that's just a, a, a different interpretation of that. 
And what we see is this youthful pair, softest care. Uh, the language itself, this kind of like semantic field of, of innocence, of uh, unrestrained uh, joyful happiness. Um, on grass they play. Uh, and they can do this because the parents are afar. There's no restraint here. There's no parental restraint, people telling them not what not to do. Um, however, this line here, and the maiden soon forgot her fear. So maiden uh, is, is the word uh, uh, indicating that the girl is a virgin. Um, but she soon forgot her fear. And there is that kind of like hint of guilt. Um, the fact that we are told to to feel guilty however when she's away from the parents uh, that that feeling has been removed um, however again there is that kind of suggestion uh, there is there is this once they talk uh, once once the couple talk about the consummation of the love agreeing to meet uh, they agree to meet when the silent sleep uh, when the weird tarry wanderers weep so again there is this this hint of um it must take place in the world of experience so the sexual act must take place in the world of experience this kind of free uh innocent sexual um sexual inhibition um once it begins to be uh discussed when it when it begins to it looks as if they are meeting to to uh to consummate that love then there is that sense sense there it, this kind of like foreshadows the shame uh, through through the act of sex because there there is this hint uh, that the sex must be hidden the silent sleep in the heavens deep however um, this is how sexuality is presented in the world of experience uh, because this is the the learning that she gets from her father so to her father white came the maiden bright uh, contrast the white here uh, you know we talked about uh, the light being um, a good thing okay it, it, it was a kind of metaphoric metaphorically representing freedom whereas here we have the father white uh, his hoary hair uh, so it kind of signifies age it signifies frost uh, there is a change in the meaning uh, notice we have the maiden bright um, but his loving look is like the holy book this holy book and the uh, definition of the phrase holy is different from definitions further up the poem um, where we uh, decided that um, holy is is kind of like the biblical good this is now a sense of inhibition so the the holy book the bible is being used or, or being used to suggest a sense of in, inhibition and control um, and the control is because she is fearful. We can see that his loving look and the Bible uh, leave her fearful and kind of scared. And this, this contrasts to her previous happiness. We have owner the girl, pale and weak, to thy father speak, O oh, the trembling fear, O oh, the dismal care. So what we see now is somebody who is despite the guilt of it what we have is someone who was once carefree happy what is what's happening is she's being control crushed by that jealous world of experience and we have the o the the, the repetition of o to to show her unhappiness but the semantic field becomes much more negative here so what we see uh, or what we what we have been presented with is this this girl who represents innocent sexual freedom up here and the happiness of the innocent sexual freedom being told that it is uh, or, or the suggestion that actually sexual freedom really represents guilt and fear um, and I think this is what Blake was really uh, arguing was that in his time this is how it was presented uh, rather than he oh, spoken lots and lots and lots of times about uh, Blake's 
beliefs about free love, the fact that one should not be inhibited uh, by sex, that sex actually is something that should be enjoyed uh, for procreation and for enjoyment's sake, rather than something that should be hidden away and not talked about. Yet this is how, this is kind of his, how he feels it should be. And this is how it was presented in this time. So this is the love, sweet love, which is a crime. It's that, that world of experience uh, that, uh, that is evocative of inhibition and control. So when we look at the, the title of the poem, Little Girl Lost, uh, how is the little girl lost? Uh, is it a fact that she has become morally lost by sexual freedom or, or by uh, sexual consummation even? Um, is it a criticism of the belief uh, that a sexually experienced person is tainted? Um, and that's really, I think, what Blake is uh, Blake is presented here that 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 idea that as soon as a person becomes sexually experienced they become solid in some way um, or is it Blake's perhaps Blake's idea that if she agrees with her father uh, and sees herself as tainted she herself has become lost to uh, Blake's uh, world of uh, the, the, the kind of the, the joyful sexual experience so the whole poem really is is links to that idea of uh, repressive sexual uh, feelings um, and, and the hiding of it uh, in that particular era compared to, so Blake's belief that, that sexuality and sex should be a joyful thing in comparison to how it was presented. And, and notice there is that, there are those links to uh, how uh, it's it's related not just by the parent but by uh, religion also uh, what parents do what religion do they they represent that world of experience that inhibits uh, so represses us uh, stops us from enjoying life uh, as Blake believed we should have done